Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in. For those of you who have managed to purchase one of these extremely scarce 50 series NVIDIA GPUs, and if you're currently just tearing your hair out, trying to get your brand new NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti, 5080 or 5090 to work, but you're stuck with the black screen, then this video is just for you. So when my GPU arrived, I went through days, if not almost probably a week of frustration, stripping apart my PCs, draining and refilling the custom water loop in my new build, just behind me over there. And at one point, I literally almost gave up and I was thinking of sending it back as dead on arrival. But it turns out that the problem was something that I totally didn't expect and I think it could be a hidden issue that not everyone might think of straight off the bat and something that's not as obvious as one might assume. So I'm making this video in the hopes that it might save a lot of people from unnecessary RMA returns. But before we dive into the strange fix, well what I think is strange and what I discovered with my particular card, uh, I just want to give a quick disclaimer that this solution worked for me, but it may not be a universal fix for everybody. It's always best practice to go through some of the uh, standard troubleshooting steps first. So I just want to cover those real quick. First and foremost, always check your drivers, okay? Download the latest drivers from the NVIDIA app and make sure that you've installed the latest NVIDIA drivers. Outdated or missing drivers can prevent your GPU from displaying anything on screen as the system might not actually recognize the new hardware properly. Now, the second thing you want to know is, is your PCIe slot working? So you want to test the PCIe slot on your motherboard. One way to do this is to try an older GPU in the same slot or maybe test your new card in a secondary PCIe slot on your motherboard if you have one. A lot of the times faulty or dirty PCIe slots can cause connection issues and swapping slots helps to rule this out. Another thing you might want to do is inspect your CPU and your motherboard, the socket where the CPU sits. So a lot of the time reseeding your CPU, checking for bent pins and verifying that your motherboard and your CPU are both in good shape. Literally a misaligned CPU or a damaged uh, socket pin can cause instability and prevent proper GPU initialization. And it's important to note that if your CPU doesn't have an integrated GPU, an iGPU, you won't ever get a display signal without a working graphics card. So if you don't have an older GPU lying around, well, you're kind of screwed. Unless you have a friend whose GPU or CPU you might be able to borrow just for troubleshooting purposes. Um, unless you want to try the world's most frustrating game of blind BIOS navigation. which is not something that I would recommend. Now, another problem that you might have is power supply capacity. So you want to ensure that your power supply, your PSU has enough wattage for your 50 series GPU and other components in your system. So the RTX 5080 and even more so the 5090 are really power hungry and an underpowered PSU can also cause boot failure problems or black screens. Now an easy and obvious way to verify sufficient power supply is to check for the white LED near the GPU power port. Now if this is lit up, your card likely isn't getting enough juice and your system might not boot properly, you won't get a display, no windows, no BIOS. So sometimes even a slightly loose connection can cause this. So make sure that you've pushed it all the way in. Now, if you happen to have an old PC lying around, Test everything in another PC. So try your new GPU in an older known working system or try an old GPU in your new system to rule out a dead card or faulty hardware. This isolates whether the issue is with the graphics card itself or any other component in your setup. Now last but not least, you might want to try forcing PCIe Gen 4 in the BIOS. So some older hardware may have trouble recognizing the new GDDR7 memory that's being used in the new 50 series cards. So forcing the PCIe slot to run at gen four instead of on auto or gen five can sometimes resolve display issues as it helps to stabilize the connection and bypass potential compatibility problems, especially if you have an older motherboard and CPU. So each of these steps is basically designed to systematically eliminate potential failure points 
whether it's software, power delivery, or maybe a hardware level connection issue. And skipping these steps can make you miss a simple fix, so it's definitely worth checking thoroughly before assuming your GPU is defective. Now, if you've tried all of that, just like I did, and still have no display, which is exactly what happened to me then, stick around because this is the part where things get a little interesting. So I'm using a Gigabyte Aorus Water Force Water Block RTX 5080, which is running on a Seasonic, it says Fantax, but it's made by Seasonic, an ATX 3.0 1200 watt power supply. And I also bought premium cable mod cables that are braided and specifically designed for this PSU. So you'd think that Nvidia's new high power, 12 volt high power connector should have been the perfect match, right? Well, I triple checked the connections and the white debug LED next to the GPU power port was never lit. Meaning, supposedly, that the card was getting enough power, but I still wasn't getting a display. But I checked the connections over and over again, plug, unplug, reseat, reseat the GPU, I tried everything, and literally nothing out of the graphics card, no matter what I did. Now, thankfully I'm running an AMD 9950X, which fortunately has an iGPU, integrated GPU. So I was able to do all my troubleshooting by plugging my monitor into the HDMI output on the back of my motherboard. But alas, despite all the tips and tricks I mentioned earlier in this video, nothing seemed to work. I was getting no output from this bad boy over here. So I go back, I drained and refilled my water loop multiple times, swapping CPUs, trying different motherboards, and even testing the card in older systems and my older card in the new system, which fired up straight away. And like I was literally about to give up and declare this thing DOA. But then I noticed something strange about the cables. So the Gigabyte supplied power adapter had the 12 volt high power connector on one side. And on the other it had three by eight pin PCIe connectors. And what I noticed is that all four sensor pins were actually populated. So it's really difficult to see. But if you have a look right here, on the top there, there are some small sensor plugs, and on this cable mod cable, only two out of the four are populated. Now, in theory, you'd safely assume that the direct 12 volt high power to 12 volt high power connection should have been the one to go for and should ultimately be better. But on a hunch, I decided to try the adapter. So on the back of this box, this is my power supply that's currently in my new rig. And this has a little diagram on the back of the power supply showing you the outputs that are available. So in this bottom corner here, you'll actually see the 12 volt high power connector, which is a dedicated ATX 3.0 or 3.1 output that is supposed to directly feed your graphics card. So the plugs are the same on both ends. So what I did, I grabbed three old PCIe 8 pin cables from my two other belts. I had one lying around and then I ordered more, but I digress and I plugged them into the back of the power supply. Connected them to the adapter on the card and then snapped that 12 volt high power adapter straight into my GPU. And would you believe it? Bang, the card booted into Windows and I've been gaming and benchmarking for three weeks now without a single issue. So why might this happen? Well, it's, it's hard to say exactly, but it seems like something about the sensor pins in the new 12 volt high power standard might be finicky, especially when you're moving to the uh, 50 series of NVIDIA's graphics cards. Now, even though my cable mod cable was apparently designed for ATX 3.0 and ATX 3.1, somehow the old school PCIe cable, the three by eight pin connector, worked flawlessly. So my theory is that some custom cables might not properly signal power delivery to the GPU, especially if they skimp on those additional sensor pins. So the adapter, strangely enough, might act as a more stable bridge. Now, I really have no idea why it happened, but hey, it worked for me, and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. So in essence, PC building really is like half science and half witchcraft, and sometimes you just have to laugh when your $2,700 GPU won't boot because of a stupid fucking cable. So guys, if you're dealing with a brand new NVIDIA GPU that's giving you black screen issues, especially with an RTX 5080 or similar card, and you've ruled out all the obvious stuff, then just try using the adapter with your PSU's 
with your power supply's regular PCIe cables. It might just save you from an unnecessary RMA. Guys, I really hope this video helped some of you out there who have been struggling with these bugs. And if it did, please drop a like and make sure you subscribe. We're nearly at 1,000 subs, so your contribution to helping us reach this milestone would be greatly appreciated. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments if you've run into any of these issues yourselves and if maybe you found any other weird issues and solutions with the new NVIDIA 50 series GPUs. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.